Papa's been smooth since days of underroos. This is Mark Bell from supertraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project. The Power Project is brought to you today by HowMuchYouBench.net and the only strength magazine on the planet, ThePowerMagazine.com. The question for today comes from Thomas Johns. First of all, Power Project Army, never trust a guy with two first names. Thomas Johns has a question for the Power Project. His question is about the leg press and getting jacked and swole legs, getting some big old wheels. He says he likes to do leg press as a secondary movement on his squat day or on his lower body day. And he's wondering if that's a good movement. He never sees us do it, never sees me talk about it, never hears the people's coach rambling on and on about it. And uh, he would like to know my thoughts on it. Well, the reason why you don't see us utilizing a leg press is because we are cheap. We do not have a leg press. We do not own one. Uh, I myself am not a fan of a leg press. puts my back in a weird compromising position uh, that I don't like. I don't like having my feet up on that angle like it's on, like my legs are on somebody's shoulders. Ne- never mind. Anyway, to each his own, whatever you prefer. Uh, Leg press, I'm not a big fan of. However, it can give you great results. I kind of wish I had one because I wish I I could use it uh, for, you know, some light work and just get some blood into the quads. But for whatever reason with me, it always made my back kind of curl under. I never liked that position. Uh, It always felt somewhat dangerous to me. Uh, But the leg press is a great tool. And on a further note, Many, many of the strongest lifters in the world train in commercial gyms. Ed Cohn used to train in a commercial gym. Now, commercial gyms have changed quite a bit over the years, but Bill Kazmaier, Ed Cohn, a lot of strongman guys, Derek Poundstone comes to, comes to mind. Um, Constantine Konstantinov, you ever seen videos of that monster? Uh, that guy's training in a commercial gym. Uh, Andre Milanichev is training in a commercial gym. You hear Americans all the time complaining about a commercial gym, and what they don't realize is the gym is inside here and inside here. It's not about what you actually have and what you don't have in the gym. It's about what you do with whatever the hell is there. Um, things like leg presses, things like leg extensions, things like leg curls. You don't think a leg curl works your hamstrings? Come on, of course it does. You don't think a leg curl can work your hamstrings as good as a glute ham raise? I would say it can. Why not? It's a great exercise. It's been used for years and years and years and years, and it's been proven to be effective over and over again. You see some of these uh, bodybuilders walking around, these hamstrings so thick that you can see them right through their pants. If you look real close the way I do, you can see them and enjoy yourself. Anyway, that's probably a topic for another day. But the point is, a lot of these machines can build hypertrophy. Can they build strength? Fuck yeah, they can. Of course they can. Let's not be stupid. Let's not be idiotic. And let's not rule out the fact that different machines and different exercises can still be effective for powerlifting even when they're not used by other powerlifters. I just emailed KK, Konstantin Konstantinov, one of the strongest raw lifters anybody's ever seen, one of the strongest raw uh, deadlifters of all time, a 939 or 938 deadlift with no belt, no powerlifting gear. The guy is an absolute monster. And that guy's training inside a commercial gym, and he's just using a barbell, and he's just getting after it whatever way he can. Sometimes he does four or five different deadlift exercises in the same training session. So he might do, like, say, a deficit pull, a block pull, and he might do some stiff leg deadlifts. And then God knows what else he'll do after that. But the point is, you don't need fancy stuff. You don't need fancy equipment. However, the commercial gyms uh, offer a bonus in the fact over something like a CrossFit gym or some of these other gyms that you see, uh, in the fact that they do have machines. And why are the machines there? Why do they exist? How did they get there in the first place? Some, some of the reason why they're there is so that nobody has to show people how to work out. There's a picture on the machine itself, and it says to go like this with it. And so people go, oh, okay, and they put a pin in there. But it's what you make of it. It's what you make of it. You can, you can put the pin in there and fart around and move around like that, or you can really get after it and really you know, load the thing up. You can do drop sets. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with selector, selectorized machines uh, that have a great advantage. One of the reasons why I bought a 
hammer strength row for my gym uh, was the fact that it is a bodybuilding tool. And a bigger muscle will oftentimes be a stronger muscle. Look at the people that have the biggest raw bench presses of all time. They all have huge arms, huge forearms, huge biceps. Those act as shock absorbers for them. Look at Shane Hammond, one of the greatest raw squatters of all time. Had huge, massive, massive legs. Not only was he uh, heavy and fat and overweight, but he had a ton of muscle in those calves, a ton of muscles in those quads, and tons of muscles in those ham hockers of his, and he would dive bomb and land on those things and help rebound himself up. There's been many examples of this over the years. Look at uh, Ronnie Coleman. You don't think Ronnie Coleman does leg presses. You don't think Ronnie Coleman does leg extension, leg curls. Ed Cohn was a big proponent of it. He did them at least once a week. Leg curls, leg extensions. I think he might have done leg presses. Hack squat machine, all that stuff. It can all be beneficial. It can all help you to get to the next level. So if you like leg presses, I would say utilize them. I'd maybe do one or two barbell movements first. I'd always suggest a barbell movement over a machine. I'm not saying that machines are better by any means. Utilize the barbell movements first and then have at it with the machines afterwards and destroy yourself with those. Don't forget that some basic exercises can lead to some amazing results. Things like uh, one-legged squats, things like step-ups, things like lunges that have at least some athletic aspect to them. Uh, they have a little bit more movement pattern than a typical squat does. Uh, these types of movements um, can have a tremendous value on your training. and have a tremendous value on the size, the strength of your ligaments, tendons, muscles, and it can just help you get to the next level. So why not utilize it? Why not incorporate it? And that is it from supertraining.tv.